All right, guys, so I stumbled across this video from Miss Tiffany Cross on MSNBC. And if you guys don't know who Miss Tiffany Cross is, then um, that shouldn't be a surprise because nobody knows who she is, right? She's irrelevant because she really is just Joy Reid Light, right? L I T E, Joy Reid Light, okay? And Joy Reid is already insufferable enough as it is. So therefore, somebody who's essentially just trying to imitate her in regards to um, how woke they can be and how much of a race beta they can be, obviously, um, they're going to get pushed off to the weekend shows that nobody watches. So that's probably why you haven't heard of her. But she is just as incendiary and just as much of a race beta as Joy Reid. She's just worse, right? She even has reviews of people saying, hey, you know, I, I can't stand your voice. Your show is not that good. And uh, yeah, you ain't Joy Reid. So when people are saying that you're worse than Joy Reid, then you know you're bad, right? But um, in this monologue she's going to give here, she's going to go out to people like Sage Steele and Van Jones for being the quote-unquote uh, black faces, but not the black voices that uh, should be lifted up, right? And she's going to blame uh, wealthy white people for lifting up these black faces. Um, however, at the same time, um, she's going to be begging these same wealthy white people that she's chastising for money, right? To lift up the black voices that she agrees with, AKA the liberal blacks, right? So I actually want to respond to this because I, I just find everything she's saying to be absolutely, um, ridiculous, right? And, uh, I, I just want to highlight this because her thinking really is what a lot of black conservatives deal with and, and why, um, this, this is such an issue, but without further ado, let, let's go ahead and get into this. Okay. Carlos Watson, Sade Steele, Van Jones. What do these three folks have in common? Well, they're all people who have been prompted up by wealthy or powerful white Americans. And yet we, the keepers of the culture don't really rock with any of them like that. All right. So right off the bat, she said, oh yeah, they're propped up by wealthy white people. Well, first of all, you're propped up by wealthy white people, right? MSNBC, I think, is owned by like NBC Universal, and NBC Universal is owned by Comcast. Go look up the CEOs. Go look up who's running that company. It's wealthy white people. So you're being propped up by the same people that she's gonna complain about in this whole video. But uh, it's okay to lift up her voice because her voice, right? She's a keeper of the culture, right? Essentially, what she's saying is if you don't like Joe Biden, right, or if you support Trump, and we're going to get more into this a little bit later, but, you know, if you don't agree with me 100%, then you ain't black, right? The same thing that Joe Biden says, okay? She's the keeper of the so-called culture, okay? Well, if I got to think like these people to be a part of the culture, then I don't want it, right? Just like if I have to think like them to come to the cookout, then I don't want to come to the cookout. Disinvite me, Okay? But I would rather be disinvited than to be like these people right here. Now, obviously, the three of these folks are most definitely black faces. However, they're not necessarily black voices. And there's a difference. So they're not black. That, that's what she's trying to say. They're, they're black faces, but they're not really black because they don't think like me. Right. Again, th this is the toxic rhetoric that comes from the left in regards to defining what blackness is right it's a way of thinking that that's what the way that's how they define it let me explain take a listen to these half-witted self-hating remarks from sage still barack obama chose black and he's biracial i'm like well congratulations to the president that's his thing i, I think that's fascinating consider considering his black dad was nowhere to be found but his white mom and grandma raised him but hey mm -hmm. you do you <laughs> what? So that is undoubtedly a black face, whether or not she knows it. But it is again can't can't argue with Sage Steele on the merits of what she's saying. What did Sage Steele say that was incorrect? She's never gonna really go into that. Why? Because she can't argue with what Sage Steele is saying, right? Sage Steele made the argument that hey, you know what? Listen, I can mark whatever race I want to mark because I'm biracial, right? And Sage Steele apparently has a close relationship with her white side as much as she has a close relationship with her black side. So she feel like so she feels like just pigeonholing her into one side as if you know she doesn't have another side is is wrong, right? And somebody came to her and said, "Well, Obama says he's black, even though he's 
you know, uh, biracial. And Sage still says, well, I find that interesting because his black family was not really in his life like that. Okay. And what she's saying is that based off my lived experience, I have interactions with both sides of my family. So it's not uh, fair to just say I'm just black when that's not necessarily an accurate statement. I'm both. And again, for whatever reason, people like Tiffany Cross, their heads explode at the concept of nuance, right? She can't take it. So she has to uh, take cheap pop shots at Sage Steele instead of engaging with Sage Steele in regards to what her actual argument is. This is most definitely not a black voice. Yet, I'm sure someone is giving themselves a big diversity pat on the back by having that modern day minstrel show Sage Step and Fetch It on the airwaves spewing her continued nonsense. Yeah, now, pop shots. let's listen to Jeff Bezos' black friend, Van Jones, after a Donald Trump speech. He became president of the United States in that moment. <laughs> okay. Now, let's be clear, Van and Carlos. Are All right. So essentially, she's getting on Van Jones, right? The same Van Jones who's damn near a Marxist, right? He's a Marxist. And he's somebody that definitely voted for Biden. I believe he cried when Biden was elected. But because he said that in a certain moment, uh, Trump became president, right? He became even though Trump has been president the whole time. This man is obviously a leftist. He probably agrees with 90 percent of what she believes however because he gave trump one compliment and he worked with trump on criminal justice reform on police reform the first step act van jones congratulated trump for that because van jones is working to do things regardless of whether or not he agrees that person politically tiffany cross who claims to be so pro-black has a problem with that okay and see, that, that, this exposes how fraudulent these people are. She is a fraud, okay? Because she claims to be for black people, right? She's the culture. She's a gatekeeper of the culture. But Van Jones, somebody who was working on behalf of black people with President Trump to do something good, objectively, everybody agrees what Trump did for black people was good. Oh, no, I, this guy, he's not a part of the culture. Right. Simply because he, he said Trump was president simply because he worked with President uh, Trump. He worked with a white man <laughs> that I don't like. OK, he, he you know, even though, again, he cried when the white man that she does like got elected. <laughs> right. Doesn't matter. All that goes out the window simply because he he worked with Trump. He says one thing I didn't like. Again, this is the problem. You have to agree with these people. Ninety nine point nine percent. And if you don't, then you're not a part of the club. And that's the problem with people like her. She's an intellectual lightweight. She can't comprehend nuance. That's why she doesn't argue on the marriage. She just takes pop shots and throws out uh, slurs like calling Sage Steele a minstrel show, right? Are far from being sage, but there's certainly something to be said about wealthy and powerful white people elevating certain voices over others. By now, I'm sure you've all heard about Carlos Watson and the implosion of Aussie media. In Aussie's eight years in the marketplace, the media company never really achieved prominence in the field of journalism, nor did it ever make an impact producing multimedia content. But that sure didn't stop investors from filling Watson's coffers with more than $70 million in funding. Why? Because he had that gift of making white people comfortable. <laughs> so you're mad. You're mad that investors in venture capital gave a black man money for his startup right even though startups fail at like 90 percent, so it's not an unusual thing for a startup to fail okay so these same people are going to complain about oh, we don't get enough money there's not enough money going to black people you need to give us some money but when they give a black person money right uh well, we don't like that because that that's not the right black person, right? That's not the right black person. We we don't we we can't give them money. When I mean again, this same person is talking about certain black voices being elevated. When the black voices on the left have been elevated way more than any black voice on the right. Okay, black leftists are literally making money hands over fist. They're gaining popularity, getting opportunities hands over hand over fist from these big corporations, these wealthy white people that you complain about so much 
But yet you're still complaining just because a handful of people on the right got some money, right? Got some help. Oh, because you disagree with them. Again, this is somebody that works for MSNBC that's being propped up by <laughs> most likely a wealthy white individual. And she is complaining. Again, it, it blows my mind. Now, for those of us who don't prioritize their feelings over our actual equality, funding for our platforms is far less available. In 2017, venture capital investment reached just over $84 billion. Now, that's a height not seen since the dot-com bubble of the early 2000s. But practically none of that money went to startups run by people of color. A majority of funds went to college-educated white oh male founders. God. And, of course, it's the wealthy white folks who are writing the checks. Okay, so... You just said how you was upset about uh, venture capitalists giving money to a black person you don't like. And then you turn around and you complain about, well, black people aren't getting enough money for venture capital. Like, you can't have it both ways. If, if your whole thing is about black people getting money, why does it matter whether that person agrees with you politically? Okay, it, it, it shouldn't matter. And also on top of that, why do people continue to blame white people for why they don't want to spend money in the way they want to spend, like, we have so many wealthy black people, you know, rappers, uh, athletes, um, <laughs> doctors, we have, I mean, we even have black people in finance business, we got black people all over the place that are very wealthy, that can get into the venture capital space, but that, that's something that they don't want to talk about that, though, they don't want to talk about why is it that athletes, you know, why don't they have a venture capital fund where they're funding uh, certain startups and businesses, why, why are they not doing that? Why are you trying to put the onus on everybody else when black people have more than enough capital to do so? I mean, there's videos out there of Kodak Black, a rapper, throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars in the ocean just because he's stupid, right? Hundreds of thousands of dollars that could have went to some startup, okay? Could have been seed money. But see, you never want to look internally and say, why is it that the black people that do have wealth, why are they not doing more? Why are they not giving more money back to the communities and the entrepreneurs, right? To build businesses. You always want to look at these other people and say, why are you not spending the money I want the way I want you to spend it? And then when they do spend it in a way where they're giving it to somebody black, well, that black person doesn't agree with me. So therefore, you know, I'm still mad. <laughs> Again, these people are silly, man. These people are silly. And then if you have an issue with the way venture capital works, then you need to hold some of these athletes and these uh, wealthy black people more accountable for why they're not doing more investing, okay? That's what needs to happen. Studies have found that white people make up more than 70% of venture capitalists, while 25.2% are Asian, only 1.7%. Why is that? Why, look at these numbers, why is that? Why is it that 71.6% make it up and then you have Asians are uh, 25.2%? Well, I'm gonna tell you why, because it's culture. I'm going to tell you why, because uh, people in the Asian community, they value tech, okay? They value finance. They value money, okay? So they get into venture capital. They turn around and they take their money and they reinvest it back into startups and companies, right? To try to make more money because there is a culture there, okay? Not like It's not like they got way more money than anybody else. It's just the fact that they have... A culture that values that stuff. That's why it happened. If you want black people to be more prominent in venture capital, black people have to take that up as a thing. There has to be a startup culture. And it has to be done by people who have money, right? Mainly black people who have money. That's how it works. But see, she, she doesn't want to have that conversation. Nobody ever wants to have that conversation. ...are black and just 1.3% are Latino. Now, in 2016, discrimination and bias in favor of companies run by white men caused the U.S. to lose out on over 1.1 million minority-owned businesses and forfeit more than 9 million potential job opportunities. So, a word of advice to the landscape of the rich and powerful. Perhaps, instead of investing in people of color who make you comfortable, you may want to give a second look to those of us who make you uncomfortable. Oh my God. After all, we've been uncomfortable for a mighty long time. And we... You are uncomfortable. You are uncomfortable. Okay? You are oppressed. You are a victim. I'm not. Which, I mean, you're, she's not either. Because look at her. She's on MSNBC, again, complaining about being uncomfortable. 
I don't, I don't, I don't understand it for the life of me. Uh, speak for yourself. And guys, you know, sometimes I, I say stuff. I'm not speaking for any black person. I'm just speaking for myself. Okay. I can't tell you how every black person feel. I can tell you how some feel, but I, I, I try not to generalize. We are actually the ones who likely rock with the communities you're trying to reach. This is why there's such credo in spaces we create ourselves. Credibility is crucial, and doing all things for the culture is key. So while some of you keep raining $100 million on people not invited to the cookout, you're starting to look more like the villains in Get Out. During the un Again, did billions of dollars not go to Black Lives Matter? Billions of dollars went to Black Lives Matter last year. Where that money at, Tiffany? What about that money? Huh? You ain't got nothing to say about that, do you? But you're you going to complain because somebody like Van Jones got a gift from Jeff Bezos. Or Sage Steel is on ESPN. Or some other guy got a $70 million investment into his media company. But billions of dollars went to Black Lives Matter last year. What happened to that, Tiffany? Where that money at? Clown, bro. Rest the past few years, I heard from many CEOs and others in leadership positions say with confidence that they've had really honest conversations with their black employees. And let me just tell you, no, you didn't. You had a meeting, and perhaps there was likely some candor in the remarks. But do understand, there was a meeting after the meeting, and that's where the honest dialogue took place. And for many, being a part of this cultural shift is all well and good until we start to talk about a power shift where we're not asking to be hired, but we're the ones doing the hiring. And if that makes you uncomfortable, but this does not. Barack Obama chose black and he's biracial. I'm like, well, congratulations to the president. I think that's fascinating consider considering his black dad was nowhere to be found, but his white mom and grandma raised him. You should ask yourself why. <laughs> oh, my God. She, again, worse than Joy Reid. I hope that they never, never, ever, ever, ever give her uh, a prime time spot. She won't because her ratings are terrible. So, <laughs> yeah, I had to respond to that, man. That that whole monologue just, it was just a bunch of nonsense. It pissed me off. I don't understand how she has a TV show. But, again, you know, these are the same people that love complaining about white people. But yet... You know, she is propped up by uh, white people, right? Just white leftists, right? So it's like, I don't understand what you're really complaining about. I don't understand what your problem is. It seems that she just hates on Van Jones and Sage Steele and these other people because they're more successful than her. That seems to be kind of what it is. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.